She told them in 2009 that we were on the wrong path. She warned you about Clico. They dismissed her. She warned you last year after the elections in the estimates that again they were on the wrong path. That the fiscal deficit was not correct and that we would end up in problems. She started robbing shoulders. They spoke about violence. She's held the people's assemblies, and the people have spoken. And she's here again tonight, political leader, to speak to you. Stand up for your right. It is not by accident that we are here at Quakers Road tonight. Good night, one and all. And I want to thank you for coming out, but I want to talk to you tonight. And I am here to talk to you because there's nobody else in the country talking to you. And it is not by accident that we are at Quakers Road. Because the one thing that symbolized the religion of the Quakers was duty. It is not by accident that we are a stone's throw away from the residence of the governor of the central bank. And under any other governor, I might have carried this meeting in Bridgetown. But since all of the main meetings, including the summoning of the Minister of Finance to his residence for breakfast and lunch meetings, takes place across the road there, here would have been more appropriate than the towers built by Tom Adams. It is not by accident that we are in the constituency of the Minister of Tourism, who has distinguished himself only by being on the front page and being able to go down and come up and go down and come up, walking up. The problem is that all he has achieved in tourism is for tourism to go down and down and down and down. And in spite of all his ranting and ravings this week, that he has done opinion polls or surveys about the state of tourism, we find ourselves tonight in February with the unfortunate reality that for the first 15 days of February, in this bumper tourist season, with Tourism declines down. Tourism arrivals down by more than 12% in this country tonight as we speak. Every single market is down. And in spite of the fact that they have sought to hide this information from the Barbados Hotel and Tourism Authority Association, and everybody else who would normally get this information, the truth is, the numbers don't lie and they will always come out. The United States down by 4.7%. Canada down by 20%. United Kingdom down by 3.2%. Germany down by 20.6%. Trinidad down by 60%. Brazil down by 56%. I could go on and on and on and on. But today, you learn the truth after hearing him this week tell you that it is a bumper tourism season. Well, he is obsessed with bumpers. Let him stick with that. And if that were not enough, the governor, 
whose residence below which we speak, and I don't mean the governor general, don't mind the governor of the central line, believes that he is the governor general to the government and that he calls the shots. But the governor of the central bank, who is now the chief propagandist of the government, has come to you this week again and told you that confidence is returning to this country. The same of the central bank would have been responsible along with the minister for the IMF being told only on the 10th of February, not even 14 days ago, that Barbados does not need to access international markets during the forecast period in order to maintain foreign reserves at the level of three months cover, provided that capital, private capital flows return to normal levels. Stick with me, people, because I am giving you the context and I will bring it home to you. I want the governor of the central bank tonight, give me a chance this indeed. I want the governor of the central bank tonight to tell us whether he is in a position to confirm to Barbadians whether the reserves, even though $300 million was borrowed by Credit Suisse under the worst conditions of any loan, and even though at the end of last year, December 31st, they went up to 1.16 billion, that tonight they have dropped below a billion dollars again in this country in less than seven weeks. And what are the implications for that? What are the implications for those of you who have jobs? What are the implications for the government and its ability to defend the dollar? What are the implications for ordinary people who now tonight do not know how to face next month or next year? Trevor spoke tonight about young men in this country having to go up to Dodds for 42 days because they could not and cannot afford to pay the maintenance. And when the 42 days done, the all that happened is that the old mothers more money than the old when they went in. I am here tonight to speak about the people who at the bottom are being put up front to take the lash for things that they did not do and for a country that they did not bring down to its knees. And you have, if you believe the IMF, because the government and the Prime Minister does not believe that he has to tell us about any layoffs or talk to the country about it. You see the President of the US talk to the Americans every Saturday. You see the President of the US go and visit the troops on the front line. And you see him go and visit injured troops. And all that our Prime Minister can do is to go to Sherburn and tell drainage workers they lay you off the wrong way, but you still had to be laid off. <laughs> that is all he can do. But you have a situation tonight where the people in this country, and that is why we are in Quakers Road, Carrington Village, the people who are being asked to take the first lashes the people who don't know how they will pay water bill or light bill are the people who can least afford it. People at three and four hundred dollars a week barely able to pay the bills and buy food. These are not people who have the luxury of going to Miami or even going to every reggae or calypso show. This is the 55 year old woman who get laid off from drainage who's struggling to pay water and light, who can barely afford to buy a bodice or a frock to go to church, who praying that somebody who is a niece in New York will send home something for her 
so she don't have to do that. This is the same young man I talking about who can't afford to support the children, particularly those with three and four children under 13. And don't tell me they shouldn't have it. They have them. Don't get di diverted by all kinds of sociological considerations that are irrelevant. It is what it is. And if you think that the government can solve the problem by sacrificing those at the bottom, then you lie. Because you cannot solve a $700 million problem with a $100 million solution. So you are not even asking them to sacrifice to carry the country to safety. You are just letting them take the first blows. And for the government, it remains business as usual. Cynthia told you tonight that the Barbados Labour Party made it very clear to Parliament, we cannot participate as much as we are parliamentarians and we want to support and salute the achievement of 375 years in Parliament. How can I walk through Mar Hill Street with people there, some of whom laid off and walk into a parliament yard Friday evening with tents and drinks and food and the royal family and a government spending a hundred thousand dollars for a 90 minute party and people cannot pay and cannot buy food in this country well if I am to be criticized so be it but I cannot in all conscience do it Principles only mean something when it is inconvenient. And I don't mean no disrespect to the royal family. But the royal suffering that people are going through in this country is what got me. And I say to you tonight that that $100,000 can buy, can allow almost 100 people to be employed for one month. And it is in that same vein that I say to you that for this government it remains business as usual. And what bothers me in Barbados tonight, truly, I come here to talk to you. I begin to wonder if this is the country that treated us well. Barbados has been good to us. There are not many other countries in the world that you would have been afforded the opportunities that you have been afforded in this country, the education, the health care, the ability to move about the country without the level of crime, not even in the Caribbean. And when the country needs us most, everybody frightened and hiding, everybody whispering, everybody sending a text, but few people willing to stand up for Barbados. I have come to Quakers Road tonight to ask who will stand for Barbados. I have come to Quakers Road tonight to ask whether we are prepared to watch our country sink under Sinclair. And I say to you tonight, it hurts my heart, and I understand human nature, you know. And what I didn't understand before, believe you me, in the last 12 months, I have come to understand. This is not 1991. I know that. In 91, 28,000 public servants stood to have their salary cut, so people came out. Now, everybody hiding because the first 3,000 gone out. And nobody wants to stand up for the 3,000. I ask, and that is why we are meeting with the unions. I am not here to curse the unions. I am not here to curse the private sector. But I ask them tonight, where is your conscience? Where is your conscience? When the official opposition speaks, and let us be clear about the powers that the official opposition has, because I hear all kinds of things in this country and all kinds of imputations sent from Ronald Jones trying to make people feel that we want to bring people to the streets. 
There is nothing worse for this country than instability. The reason why we can command the respect and the money and tourism and the things that we do is because we have one asset. We don't have, we know getting oil, but we ain't get it yet. Our asset is stability. And I say to you tonight, that I can't believe that I live in a country where there's no freedom of speech on television, where what I say has to be reduced to six column inches or 30 seconds on a radio broadcast, and the majority of people are suffering, and people who want to know better, who want information, can't get it. And then you tell me that Barbados punches above its weight. We're not even curling up to the fight nowadays, far less punching above weight. I can't believe that this is the same country that took poor people's children and educated them, left brothers and sisters behind who may not have had the same benefit, but they're still family. And the ones that get educated don't want to stop and turn back and lift the rest up and leave them now to the vagaries of the wind and to a wicked, insensitive government that is just plain incompetent. It is not that we don't have the solutions. But if I stop to discuss the solutions, then the government is taken away from what they must do to deal with the immediacy of the problem. Let us get real. 14 years we showed you in this party we know how to manage. We know how to protect people. But what we don't have now is the luxury of academic discussion. What we have now is a patient that is bleeding. And the patient is the country Barbados. And the first thing Jerome will tell you that when a patient is bleeding, you must stop the bleeding. You can't operate. You can't do physiotherapy. You can't do those other things. Stop the bleeding. And when the doctor, namely Frandel or Chris, can't stop the bleeding, and deal hell world, you are at risk of the body bleeding out. And that is where we are tonight. This morning, I had to have a meeting with some people. And at the end of the meeting, I was so depressed. Meeting with the private sector last week, meeting with the union started more again tomorrow. And I want you to understand that our opposition under the law has very few powers. If I felt that we could bring a no confidence motion tomorrow to get rid of this government, it would be filed tomorrow. But you have 16 men and women who need to go and look in the mirror and listen to Errol Barr's speech again about their mirror image. Who need to recognize that when Errol Barrow had a problem with Grant Lee Adams, that Errol Barr took a principal stand and, left and formed a party. I'm not telling you to come to us. If you want to, you can. If you don't, you don't. But what I am telling you is that principles only mean something if it is inconvenient to stand by them. And I'm saying to you that in this constituency, it is not by accident that we are in Quakers Road again. Because the only power that an opposition leader had was Brady exercised by Errol Barr when he fired John Compton under the street light. To hire John Connell to hire and fire senators. Let us get real. But what we also need to remember is that this is the same constituency that had a representative in the form of Richie Haynes who wants to came to disagreement with his own party. And he too took the principal stand. And he too said enough is enough. I disagree with the policies of Erskine Sandiford. And he left. We are not at Quaker's Road by accident, my people. We are here at the crossroads, as Dale told you tonight. Because, in the words of Nelson Mandela, we know that there is no easy walk to freedom. And there is no magic wand that I can wave tonight. But what I do know is that each of you has a role to play. And each of you has a family in the union or in the private sector. 
Is this the only country that the private sector keeps quiet when businesses are closing and businesses are facing declining profits? Is this the only country where unions keep quiet when people are being sent home? Is this the only country where the only voice that can be heard is the official opposition? I say to you tonight that I don't know when sense will prevail. I don't know when courage will rise. But I know tonight, believe you me, that one plus one plus one plus one will eventually carry us home. And in the words of the old people, one, one blow is kill all cow. And in the words of the Bible, where two or three are gathered in my name, I know tonight that I cannot, and I, you know the beauty of being a woman as a leader is that I don't have to pretend to be anything other than I am. I don't have to pretend to be the strongest. I don't have to pretend to be the brightest. I don't have to pretend to be anything other than to do good by my people. And I say to you tonight that the problem in Barbados is that as long as the only voice is the official opposition, no matter how uncomfortable it gets for government, no matter how much blows we put in them duly deserved, that the government feels that it is business as usual. There are those of you who would not be here today if the likes of those who had to face the greatest tribulations among your parents and grandparents did not find it within their soul to stand up and be counted. The beauty and genius of Bob Marley's song, Get Up, Stand Up for Your Rights, it is universal because mankind has had to fight across countries, across races. It is not me who say that you must speak truth to power. Everybody knows that power does not yield anything. And you have 16 men who Barbadians believe, and women, are more concerned about a pension than about the fact that they are on a train that is about to crash. And God is my witness. The Labour Party has worked every week since the middle of October to bring this to your attention. But a point shall come when not even us can stop the worst at this rate unless the population is prepared to say enough is enough. Barbados deserves better. Barbados can do better. And I say to you that as a woman I understand that it is easy for me to tell you you will have to join us because the institutional leaders, if they don't join us, by their silence, they become the biggest prop and ally of this government. I am telling you. And the consequences that shall be felt will not just be those at the very bottom of the totem pole who are catching it now, but it will then next be the ones just above and just above. And the pensioners who all of a sudden realize that they can't pay the bills and buy food and live in dignity. Or the middle class people for whom the salary already, they have faced a 40% increase in prices with no similar increase in wages or salaries in this country. Or the people for whom the banks call in week after week. Last night I was with some musicians. One man said to me, I am afraid to tell you that all I have eaten for the last few days is peanut butter and biscuits for morning, lunch, and dinner. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner. So that when I left the meeting today, I took a long drive in the country. And I took a long drive in the country to start to ask myself some questions. Is this the Barbados that I know and love? Is this the Barbados that I am prepared to die for? Is this the Barbados that I am prepared to fight for? Where is the spirit of the people? It is the government that is broken, not the people. It is the government 
that is broke, not the country. And how can we now unleash and give people the confidence that in the words of the union that formed itself out of the Barbados Labour Party, unity is strength. That once people band together, all of us know that this government cannot carry us to safety. And the only issue for them is, can they jump off the train seconds before it crashes, having spent enough time to get their pension, having spent enough time to do whatever else that they need to do with pockets? Can they get off the train in time? But in the meantime, a government that has four years is ruling a country and a people that does not even have a year. That is where we find ourselves in Barbados tonight. And I say to you unashamedly and unabashedly, I am not here therefore to curse the unions or the private sector, but I ask them, what does it profit a man to gain the world and lose his soul? I ask the government ministers that too. This is a question that has bedeviled humankind for over 2,000 years. Regrettably, 15 people might be able to answer it or 16. I ask the private sector, what does it profit you to hold on for a contract or a loan or a lease? Why are you so anxious to ask for a private word with ministers after a meeting? Why? Because you may find yourself with the contract, with the lease, with the waiver, but no business in 12 months' time. For those of you here who are frightened to come out and be seen or those who are at home and don't want to be seen, because you have a job. I ask you, take care that you may still have a job in 12 months. But the money that you are getting will not buy what it used to buy today or two years ago. We are reaching a point in this country, people, where courage and conscience will be the only two things that matter. And I trust and pray that as we did it under Grant Lee, as we did it in the times under Barrow, as we did it under other leaders, we don't have to resort to the ways of other countries. Barbadians are literate. Barbadians have a constitution that gives us the right to speak. Little children tell you, you can't tax my mouth. From primary school, they tell you so, not true. So how come when you get an adult, you're frightened to talk? We are a country where people can gather as we do tonight at Quakers Road. But why is it more important to stay home and watch TV or press the dress for tomorrow that you can press in the morning? Or cook for tomorrow when you can cook in the morning? When what matters now is your time and your voice because you have... 16 stubborn people who believe that they can do as they like, when they like, how they like, if they like, because the Constitution says that they got four more years. It cannot stand. And I ask you tonight, who will stand for Barbados? It cannot be the Barbados Labour Party alone. We know what we have to do to lead. We know what we have to do to perfect it. But if your voices are not heard, and if your presence is not seen, then it will be taken as permission to mash up the place by the government. You cannot have, and I'm sorry that Clyde didn't have more time to speak tonight, and Trevor for that matter. I would like to see the repeal of the Public Order Act because in serious times, 11 o'clock cannot be a serious time for us. But we will comply with the law. I am saying to you that we have a duty to ask the governor of the central bank, how are you going to sustain us when you told the IMF through your director 
less than two weeks ago that you do not plan to go to the market to borrow any further foreign exchange. But our reserves are now below a billion dollars. And I will not say what they are tonight, but tell him as much as you restrict the data, my brother, I am a Bajan. I like Winston Hall. I all about. So you can't hide neither he nor Richard Haynes, Richard Seeley. Not one of them. And I say to you tonight that this will not be an easy walk to freedom. And those of you who are accustomed to Shafet and KFC and feel that there are instant solutions to where you find yourself, there are none. And if you want to pray that Eswick come, that is not an option either for you as an instant solution. If he comes, great. If he doesn't, he doesn't. But you cannot absolve yourself from the need and the responsibility to stand up for your country. And I say to you tonight, in all conscience and with courage, go and help me find others to stand for this country. For when we do so, and when the private sector recognizes that they have a duty to stand for this country, and when the unions recognize that they have a duty to stand for this country, then together we will be able to stop a government that is intent on crashing the train, not because of anything other than that they want to remain at the wheel for as long as possible. Good night and God bless.